This is the last nocturne of the set Opus 15, with three short and light nocturnes. And it's quite a peculiar piece, because it starts as a mazurka and ends as a chorale. So it's in triple time and it's the rhythm of a mazurka. So a mazurka is a Polish folk dance. Chopin is a Polish composer, but he moved from Warsaw to Paris when he was just 20 years old in 1830. Then he stayed there for the rest of his life and he never returned to Poland. Instead, he composed music with a lot of Polish elements like the mazurka and the polonaise. So the mazurka rhythm is this ta ta tam tam ta ta tam tam it's busy on the first beat and then two regular beats. Ta ta tam tam, ta ta ram tam, tam ta ram tam tam. Uh, so let's take, for example, this mazurka that Chopin composed, Opus 30, number two in B minor. So you can hear busy on the first beat. Now in the nocturne, you have the same rhythm here, but it's slower. So it's not as quick as a mazurka, because he chose to name it a nocturne. So it's like a mix, a mazurka in the state of this introspective uh, nightly ambience of the nocturne. it just stops on this note like it pauses to think for a bit and it's back to D minor and then we get the melody one more time and now we're going here instead in D minor forte loud Again, going back to D minor. Uh, so here we get uh, these two statements of the melody, they're repeated uh, one more time uh, with a small variation. this uh, uh, descending melody line in the end here. So that was the first section. Um, and now we get kind of a development section where we're gonna go through a lot of different keys and modulate. And uh, the mazurka is kind of flaring up in this section. Harmony surprise here. Modulating. And, and uh, lovely surprise again. Now, sostenuto means uh, sustained, so like held back, and we really get this broad feeling uh, that we get here. proportion here. 
nice outburst here these climax they're called uh, they're called the descending diminished chord these in the Chopin etude in E major opus 10 number three you have a whole page of these chords really stretching out the hand here we just have two bars uh, but it's a cool effect and then cooling down with some echoes of that here the mazurka and uh, the energy is just gone. Now we get the complete contrast to that. It's quiet and still and it's just playing chords after each other. It's a chorale, a hymn. He even writes religioso in the music, religious. It's quite amazing when you just get this nice feeling of Now, there's actually a Swedish chorale that's uh, very similar to this. Uh, it's called Moon and Sun, and it's uh, number 21 in the Swedish chorale book. It's quite famous in Sweden. melodic turn here. Now the Chopin chorale. two times and then for the last page it's kind of some new material yet again uh, in this piece just goes through different things so now we get like a signal with this forzato means just accented notes uh, in both hands in octaves here so it's like a signal and then we have these choral chords in the background like in the distance rhythm that's the mazurka rhythm that makes an appearance again here like an echo from from the first section the melodic line continue downwards here and now some choral chords again very soft We get uh, this whole long phrase one more time. It's like you know a big church bell tower when it rings. Uh, this is the kind of signal I, I get from the chorale, and you know it takes quite a long time for it to to ring out. So that's why we have such a long time of it. chord you know because 
this Discord, but Chopin displaces this note to this, so you start with this note. And then... And finally, now we're like in D minor here, uh, but in the very end, like the last seconds of the game, Chopin uh, changes it yet again from D minor. To G major. So it ends uh, on a hopeful note in major instead of minor that is so common in, in uh, a lot of the nocturnes. So overall this is a very fascinating piece. Chopin really experiments with these different dispositions in the music. I didn't think much of the piece when I first read it through. I like the first and the second in the set uh, much more, the F major and the F sharp major nocturne. But then I thought I should play all three of them. And then the music really grew on me. Because in this little piece, everything is original and genuine. And uh, even though it's very different sections, they fit together nicely in a strange way. If I managed to keep your interest this far in the video, I think you should subscribe to my channel to catch my latest videos when I publish them. Also, hit that like button and let me know what you think about the piece or my interpretation of it in the comment section below. Now, please enjoy my performance of the piece.
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and support my work on Patreon at patreon.com slash sonatasecrets and stay tuned for a new video every week.